Here's how to set up Dragon Frame to work with your Mini DF. I'll start Dragon Frame. I'm going to go to Create New Scene. Gives you a chance to name it. Decide where to save it. Now, as Dragon Frame starts up, I get this indication DF Moco connection failed USB port COM3. And that's because my mini DF is right here. And what I'm going to do is plug it into the USB port and set everything up from the beginning. I'll plug my drivers into the motor ports. I have Dolly color coded red. It goes into port 1. Focus is green. I'll put that into port 3. And Zoom is yellow, which I'll put into port 4. And now I'm through with that. I'm just going to say OK to this. I'm going to go to the arc motion control window. I'm going to go to scene and then to connections. I want the mini DF to go onto arc moco 1. So I'll go there and click Connect. It lets me choose the COM port. I just clicked OK. So that's it. My Mini DF is now connected to Dragon Frame. And I can go about adding my axes into the motion control window. I'm going to go over here. The second icon is Add Axis. I'm going to click that. It's going to let me add my first axis. And I first thing I can do is name it. I'll name it Dolly. It's connected to ArcMoco 1, channel 1, which is fine. There's lots of other settings in here to do with the setting up the driver and I'll select OK. Now I have a line here labeled Dolly. I have my jog controls which should let me move the motor. And this little house button Let's me send the motor to the home position, which is where it was when we started out. I'm going to add two more axes. This next axis I will call focus. We'll leave arc moco 1, which is our mini DF. But I'll change the channel. In this case, I'll make it channel 3. And I'll click OK. And here's our focus axis. And now I should be able to jog this motor. And I can send it back home. I'll add one more axis. This one I'll call Zoom. Arc Moco 1, I'll make this channel 4. The fourth plug on our Mini DF. And I should be able to jog the motor. And I can send the motor back where it started from. But right now, 
I think I'll set a keyframe, which is this diamond shaped thing here. This sets a keyframe at this start position. Now I'll move some motors around. I'm going to dolly forward. I'm going to move my focus closer. I'm going to zoom my lens. I can move my timeline cursor to wherever in the timeline I would want if I'll set that at frame 15. For almost anything reasonable we'd want it longer. But I'm going to use the diamond shaped icon to set another keyframe here. And you can see it has set up curves to move all my motors from the start position to this keyframe. I can jog between keyframes in the timeline with these little arrows over here. There. So that's one way to trick drag and frame into doing a real-time A to B movement, but drag and frame is mainly for stop-motion animation and for time-lapse. This little icon here in the lower right that looks like a movie camera will let me preview the move. If I click this, it's going to give me the option of running the entire range of frames which in this case is only 15 frames, or to select a shorter amount of frames to preview movement for. Um, I'll select OK. And now it's running through each of the shooting positions for the 15 frames in the sequence I've programmed. There's longer movements in the middle, and the movements will become shorter as it ramps down to a smooth stop at frame 15. Now I'm going to set up a time-lapse sequence based on the motion control program I just created. I'm going to go to Capture, Time-lapse, This opens the time-lapse window. The first line allows me to set my interval. I can have days, hours, minutes, seconds. The default is 10 seconds. I can also set a start and an end time. This is optional. Also limit to a certain number of frames. At the moment I'm just going to take the default of a 10 second delay and let it run my 15 frames. So to do that all I have to do is hit OK. It's telling me it wants to move the motors to the start position which it has now done and the first frame will be captured now. captured a shot now. The next shot will be in three, two, one. It started with small moves. And as it goes, the moves are getting larger as we're moving to the part of the motion profile that involves high speed movement. Here near the middle will be the longest moves corresponding to the fastest velocity of the dolly moving down the track.
It'll do a few more large moves before starting to ramp down the speed. Now we're getting to the curve part again and the moves will get a little bit smaller each frame as the dolly speed is ramping down to a smooth stop at the end of the motion on frame 15. Very small move there and an even smaller one for the next frame. And that's it. That's how you set up a time-lapse sequence with Dragon Frame.